dream of Jeannie with the light brown hair. A boo boo a boo Excuse me. How did you get in here, mister? This building is closed. Uh, do you happen to have a match? Thank you. Uh, could you tell me the right time, please? Uh, uh, yes, sir. It's uh, exactly 14 and a half minutes uh, past nine. Thank you. Mr. Cromwell. Mr. Cromwell, is you in there? Wonder where is he at? I don't know where. He... Oh. Mr. Cromwell, what are you doing laying down there like that? Did you know you would catch a cold? Laying down here all this... Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Get me out of here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm Uh, will y'all send somebody up here? A dead man is up here, just been killed dead. Yes, sir. Yeah, send somebody up here. Hurry up. Say this guy smooched the match off you and then held it so you could see his mug? Uh, yes, sir. That he done. Yeah. And then he asked you what time it was, huh? Yes, sir. And that he done. Now I heard everything. A guy commits a murder and then makes sure to identify himself even to setting the exact time. What's the angle, Lieutenant? Can you figure it? Sure. Cinching an alibi. Well, I must be bugs. An alibi is proving you wasn't there when you did it. But this guy takes time to prove he was here and he did do it. No, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You think you'd know this man if you ever saw him again? Well, yes, sir. All right, let's take him down to headquarters, Sergeant. Headquarters? Headquarters? Wait a minute, I ain't done nothing. Now, now, pipe down, pipe down. All we want you to do is look at some pictures. Moon pictures? Yeah, moon pictures. Come on, get moving. Okay, Kelsey, stay here till the boys come. Yes, sir. None of him. I don't see even nothing like it. Let's see. He ain't over here either. Look over here. Mm -mm, ain't nothing there. <laughs> well, look at that. High pocket Johnson. I wondered what happened to him. <laughs> One to 14 years. Mm, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. Full high pocket. He wasn't a bad boy that. He was awful good to his mother. Mm. Not in trouble, though. Here's the guards, Lieutenant. Thanks. Any luck? No. Who won the semifinal at the fights tonight? Well, I don't know. I'll look. Oh, Dynamite Jenkins in the second. Oh. I, I don't see nothing yet to even look like him. Uh, can I go now, Mr. Lieutenant? Yeah, I guess so. Thank you, sir. Wait a minute. We'll need you at the coroner's inquest, though. I hope you don't. I don't know how I'm going to explain this to my wife. 
My wife is the suspicious s -s 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 woman that you ever did see. <laughs> yes, sir. And if y'all, I hope y'all don't have to call me at night, because nights is when I do my best job. <laughs> you see, because when I, when I, uh, when, uh, uh, wait a minute, there he is. There's the man. There he is. Who, me? No, the man you're looking for right there in the paper. There he is, the same eyes, the same nose, the same hair and everything. Why, you must be crazy. You know who this is? That's John G. Harrison, a society big shot. Lots of dough. Are you sure this is the man that spoke to you in the hall? Same hair, the same nose, and the same everything. Why, that's impossible. I've been reading a lot about this man lately. He couldn't talk to you if he wanted to. Why, he's a deaf mute. Hmm? Hmm? He's deaf and dumb. He can't speak. He oh. never said nothing to me about that. All he did was ask me for a match and the time. What time did you say that was? Exactly 9, 14 and a half. Here it says that Mr. Harrison was dedicating a cane team that he had donated to the city at 9 o'clock. I can't hear what that says. That's the man who was talking to me. It ain't nobody else but. What do you want to do, Lieutenant? Pick him up? No, I should say not. We haven't anything to go on except this man's word. Mr. Harrison's an important man. And it looks as though he has an airtight alibi. Well, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do? I'm going to dump it right in the DA's lap and let him figure it out. As I understand it from you, gentlemen, one of our most respectable citizens paused in the midst of a dedication ceremony, whisked himself five miles across the city in a twinkling, committed a murder, talked his head off to the janitor, in spite of being a deaf mute, mind you, whisked himself back, and nobody noticed he'd been gone. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Well, no, sir, we're not trying to tell you anything, but... We're just reporting what the janitor said. A janitor, my eye. They tell me he had a gin breath he could hang your hat on. Well, I can't help that, sir. He still insists it was Harrison that spoke to him. Yes? Mr. Clark wants to speak to you about the Cromwell case. Says it's very important. Put him on. We'll see what the young genius has to say about it. All right, Clark, who did it? I got a terrific hunch on this Cromwell case. I think it ties up with two of the murders. Well, one will do for a starter. When can I see you? Okay, Chief, I'm practically there. Hello. Hello, honey. Sit down. I'll be back in the jiffy and I'll take you to lunch. Where's the fire? What's the rush? Can't wait now, honey. I gotta see the Chief. Well, so do I. I gotta hurry up, Cole, and I thought maybe you knew what he wanted to see me about. Well, I don't know, darling. He doesn't tell me everything, and I broke my crystal ball last week. Oh, well, you're a big help, you are. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Well, so am I. What's keeping it? Not a darn thing. <laughs> Whatever it was, I didn't do it. Hey, Chief, I've just been going Just a minute. Just a minute, Clark. You wrote this story about Harrison? I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my own little typewriter. Were you there? Certainly I was there. You don't think we get interviews by television. Did you actually see John G. Harrison there at 9 o'clock? Why, of course I did. What's this all about? Well, Clark, you still think you have a case? Sure. I knew all about that. I read the papers, too. Case? Against whom? Harrison. For what? For the murder of Howard Cromwell. At 9 o'clock last night. Oh, you must be crazy. I stood right next to him, as close as I am to you. Nevertheless, I say Harrison murdered Cromwell. Well, he must have been twins. What's your angle, Clark? Just this. Here are a few things I dug up about him. On May 18th of last year, Martin Stevens, head of a finance company in Pittsburgh, was strangled in his office at night. That same night, Harrison was in Pittsburgh dedicating a playground. That's just a coincidence. Coincidence, huh? Well, here's another one. On January the 21st of this year, Albert Simmons, head of a finance company in Boston this time, was strangled in his office at night. Harrison was in Boston dedicating a gymnasium for underprivileged children that same night. Well, that's still now. Now, just a minute. Last night, Howard Cromwell, also head of a finance company, was strangled in his office at night while Harrison was dedicating his canteen. Are they all coincidences? Do you accuse Harrison of committing these murders just because he happened to be in town at the same time? And in plain sight of hundreds of people when the murders took place. Don't forget that. That's right. Well, it's been nice knowing you, Sherlock. I'll come up and see you sometime at the asylum. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. Oh, hello, Tim. Hello, Jack. Now, look, Chief. All these people were in the same business, finance company. They were all killed in the same way, strangled, and at night. 
while all these dedications took place at night, too. I claim the same man did all three jobs. And I say it still couldn't be Harrison. But the janitor swears it was Harrison who talked to him. That's a lot of bunk. Well, of course it is. Everyone knows Harrison's a deaf mute. I don't. I think it's just an act. Oh, you mean at dedications when he should talk, he doesn't. And at murders when he shouldn't, he does. Is yes. that it? This gets much screwier. You can dust out a pad itself for me, too. And how do you explain a little thing like Mr. Harrison being in two places at the same time? Yes, even Superman hasn't figured that one out yet. Any fool knows that's impossible. But I got a hunch that that's the key to the situation. And I want you to indict Harrison and give me a chance to prove it. Sorry, but I don't run this office on hunches. I had a hunch on the Garfield case. You said I couldn't get a conviction, but I did, didn't I? Yes, you were lucky. And how about the Chambers case? You and the whole staff tried to laugh me out of that one, but I had the last laugh there, too. But this is different. You'll be laughed out of court on this one. I'll take a chance on that. I'll stake my job on it. Well, I won't, so forget it. I won't forget it. And if I don't convict him, I'll hand in my resignation. But I insist that you indict Harrison. See here, young fellow. I'm still running this office, and as long as my name is on that door, I'll make the decisions, regardless of what you insist on. There'll be no indictment of Harrison, and that's final. And next time you dump a case on my desk, make sure you've got some evidence to go with it. Yes, sir, but I was just trying that's to... That's all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry to have wasted your time, Miss Mason. Oh, that's quite all right. I'll get a free lunch out of it anyway. There's things like this that make me think I ought to get another job. Maybe you've got something there. Yeah. Maybe I have. Can you imagine that, Tim? Yeah. I think you're crazy. Huh? That kid's done a lot of good work. Handled big cases. Got convictions, too. Oh, but this case is impossible. That's why I say you're crazy. Downtown, they're talking about running him for your job next election. Is that so? Yeah. And that crack about the name on the door might backfire on you. Oh, come on, Skippy. You don't know how lucky you are. Stop pouting. Let's go eat. Babs, the man is guilty. I know it. I can feel it in my bones. Sure it isn't your rheumatism. Stop kidding. I'm serious. How can you be, darling? Well, there were hundreds of people, including myself, who saw that man at the dedication. We can't all be wrong. That's what they used to say about 50 million Frenchmen, but look at them now. <sighs> Clock speaking. Yes, yes. Sure I do. I told you so. Well, that's more like it, Chief. Okay, thanks. And I'm sorry I got so excited. I apologize. But thanks a million for seeing it my way. Well, what do you think of that? I don't think I know. Now, you take my advice and dump it right back in his lap. Why? Well, darling, can't you see through that? It's as clear as the nose on Jimmy Durante's face. Tim Moran was in there when we left, wasn't he? Yeah, what about it? Tim's a pretty smart politician. He put the DA in that job. So? So he's going to keep him there, darling, by letting you, Sonny Boy, make a fool of yourself on an impossible case and fall flat on your nose. Don't you get it? No, I don't get it. And it's not an impossible case. Oh, Eddie, don't be a chump. Now, you call him right back and say no thank you before I slug you and let's go eat. Nope. No dice, sweetheart. You're the dumbest smart guy I ever saw. Right now, you've got a chance to be the next district attorney, and all that goes smack in the ash can the minute you lose this case. Yeah, but how about when I win it? Oh, I suppose you'll be the next governor. And why not? Tom Dewey almost did it. Now, you just wait and see. All right, Mr. Edward Arlington Clark, I'll wait. But I'll have a waste paper basket in my hand to catch your head when the DA lops it off. <laughs> Come on, Toots, let's eat. Well, thank you. You've spoiled my appetite. Eleanor, call the Regal Flowers and have them send a dozen roses to Miss Barbara Mason at the Chronicle office. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and tell them to put my heart in beside them. says the young prosecutor seems pretty cocky. We'll take that out of him before we're through. Did you get any help from the Pittsburgh police, Jim? Nope. They haven't got as much to go on in their case as we have. Huh. You can do with a little help on this one. We'll see.
Oh, excuse me, mister, but is this the place where my trial is coming off? Your trial? Yes, sir. What are you being tried for? Oh, I ain't being tried for nothing. I'm supposed to send a man to the lecture chair today. Is this where I does it? Just go right in there. I hope it don't take long, because I'm a busy man. Uh, Mr. Clark. Yeah, I is. Hello, Nicodemus. How do you do, Mr. Clark? It's a nice place you got here. <laughs> yes. Come on in. Sit down, right here. Yes, sir. Now, when you get on the witness stand, don't be nervous. Why should I be nervous? I ain't done nothing. <laughs> That's right. Hey, if that guy can't hear, I'll eat my badge. Get him. Evidently, that's the janitor who said he saw you in the building. See? He heard every word. Maybe he reads lips. Deaf mutes all do that, you know. My wife can beat that. She reads my mind. Sometimes. Hiya, genius. Hello, honey. Say, I've been all over town trying to get you a steel helmet. Steel helmet? Yes, you should have some protection for your head when you butt it against a stone wall. You think it's that bad? Yep. You and the Jap Navy have one thing in common. You're both sunk. Ha, ha. Very funny. Not original, but very funny. <laughs> Mom will be right over there whenever you want to cry on her shoulder. Now in session. Judge Martin Tama presiding. According to the testimony you gave, a man met you in the Markham building on the night of October the 3rd and asked you for a match. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And he also asked you for the right time. Yes, sir, and that's correct. And what... Would you recognize this man if you saw him again? Yes, sir, I sure would. Now, I want you to take a look around and tell me if you see him in this courtroom. Yes, sir, that's him sitting right over there. That gentleman with that big round moon face. All right, All right here, please. Go no with us. Have you ever had uh, hallucinations? Come again? <laughs> I mean, do you imagine that you see or hear things? I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Are you positive you heard Mr. Harrison speak to you in the hall? Yes, sir. If I hadn't heard him spoke to me, how would I know that he spoke? If I was to tell you that Mr. Harrison's a deaf mute, what would you say? I'd say one of us is crazy. <laughs> Do you ever drink anything? Sure, anything. <laughs> How much whiskey did you drink that night? Not a drop. Now think, that was six weeks ago. How can you be so sure? Sure that I didn't drink any whiskey? Yes. Well, that night I was only drinking gin. <laughs> That's all. Well, there goes your old ball game. What a chump your boyfriend was to walk into a mess like that. What do you mean, chump? He's the best prosecutor this town ever had. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Well, he better start showing it. He will. I hope. Your Honor, it may seem strange to you that I come into court on a case like this with only one witness. However, by that witness's testimony, I have succeeded in placing the defendant at the scene of the crime at the time it was committed. I now challenge my worthy opponent, the counsel for the defense, to put his client on the stand, in which case I will prove that the defendant's posing as a deaf mute is merely part of a very cleverly worked out scheme to commit the perfect crime. I maintain that the defendant can hear and speak as well as any of us. And I dare counsel to put him on the stand. The court, please. The defense has no desire to waste your honor's time, nor to submit my client to such unnecessary embarrassment. However, I will gladly dispel my young colleague's fantastic theory in a much more simple manner. Will Dr. Augustus Calvin take the stand, please? Dr. Calvin, have you examined Mr. Harrison? I have. Did you discover anything abnormal in his physical structure? Yes, he can neither hear nor speak. What specifically is the cause of his misfortune? Well, Mr. Harrison has uh, paralysis of the vocal cords and of the auditory nerves. In your opinion, doctor, just how long has this condition existed? It's congenital. He was born with it. Thank you. 
Your witness. If Your Honor, please, I ask for a recess until physicians appointed by the court can examine the defendant. Very well. Court adjourned until 10 o'clock the day after tomorrow. been able to get some help from the Boston or the Pittsburgh police. Even one little bit of evidence. Yeah, but they're stuck with those other two murders worse than we are with this one. Why, they didn't even have a colored janitor. <laughs> At least he got a couple of good laughs out of the crowd. Yeah, not as good as the ones Pete and I got from the gang down at headquarters. Only they were horse laughs. Sure. We'll be probably sent so far out in the sticks, the bears will be chasing us up trees. Oh, no, they won't. I'll fix that. You two are in the clear. I'm taking the blame for this alone. Well. If it isn't His Excellency the Governor. Remember me, Barbara Mason of the Chronicle? My editor sent me over to find out whether the rumor is true that you're having the executive mansion entirely redecorated. This little token is my own idea. Would you like to hear a funny noise? And stick your neck in here. No, thank you. I don't stick my neck out like some people I know. I'm not mentioning any names, but from where I stand, I could bite the party right on the ear. If you were a man, I'd punch you right in the nose. <laughs> Aren't you glad I'm not? Sometimes I wonder. Come on, Pete. This looks like a private fight. Now, if you say I told you so, I'll warm you good. That's a big order, sonny boy. Not so big. Thanks. <laughs> Don't you worry, honey. I'll bet if you open any lawyer's closet, at least one case like that's going to fall out. Yeah, I guess so. But I hate to make you wait till next year's orange blossoms bloom. Don't tell me you were planning on using some of this year's stock. Well, sure, why not? What was it, a military secret? No, not exactly, but I'd like to be able to say it with groceries, too, before getting married and raising a family. Oh, so you had it all figured out, even to the little events, huh? Sure. Oh, well, don't worry. The worst that can happen is that all their lives they'll be a year younger than they should have been. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, he's got to run. You take my mind off my work. Oh, what's the rush? Got to dash out and interview Harrison. Harrison? Uh -huh. Where are you going to interview him? At his home. Why? Well, I'd rather you wouldn't go there, honey. Well, darling, I can't help it. My editor already made the appointment. But Harrison's no good. He's dangerous. Well, now, now wait a minute. That's where I came in. Tell you what I'll do. I'll make him promise not to murder me. Now, look here. I... Bye. And don't wait up for me, darling. Oh, pardon me. That isn't for a year yet, is it? that newspaper girl come here is playing with dynamite. I tell you, reporters are born snoopers. That's part of their racket. She may get ideas we don't want her to get. If I can fool the medical experts, I guess I can fool this girl. Besides, I may be able to find out more than she does. What do you mean? Just this. I understand she and our young prosecutor are quite chummy. I'm rather curious to learn just how much she knows. Besides, she's not bad looking. So forget it. By the way, I'll need 5,000 when she gets here. A government bond will do. What for? Just to put on the finishing touch. Right on the dot. What a woman. I can read this better than my own shorthand. Well, shall we start? My editor feels there must be some human interest story behind all your charities, perhaps because of, well, if you'll pardon me, in connection with your... Uh, yes, and I hope you'll understand. All right.
I've got it. Is that all? That's fine. Even a reporter on a high school paper could write a good story with all this material. Here is the bond, sir. Five thousand dollars. Mr. Harrison would like your newspaper to offer that as a reward to anyone who can identify the killer of Mr. Cromwell. Why, well, I, I... Do you think they'd be willing to do that? Willing? They'll snap at it. Where's your telephone? Right out there. Excuse me, please. goes on behind my back. Oh, nothing. Just breaking up the old homestead, that's all. You mean you were serious when you made that crack about resigning if you lost? Yep. Me and John L. Lewis. Why? Why not admit your first guess was wrong, and now that you know Harrison is innocent, go out and find the guy who really did it? Because I still think it's Harrison. Are you trying to tell me he'd offer a reward for his own capture? Yes. He's that clever. It's just a trick to make people think he's innocent. Which he is. I didn't think you were that stupid. All right, my dear. Just because I agree with everybody else in town except one bullheaded lawyer, I'm dumb. Is that it? No, oh, forget it. I won't forget it. If you think I'm going to stand around and see you make public idiot number one out of yourself, you're badly mistaken. Now, you're not going to quit. Do you understand that? What are you getting all excited about? Who's getting excited? I just don't want to see a good piece of husband material go to waste. That's all. Now, you sit down and listen to me. You said you loved me, didn't you? You said you wanted to marry me and have a home and... Well, didn't you? Yes, but... Well, then, snap out of it. Go out and get that $5,000 reward so we can do something about it. Well, oh, gee... I didn't think you felt that way about it. Well, you do now. You know, honey, you're twice as beautiful when your eyes are flashing like that. As a matter of fact, you're slightly wonderful. Gee, it's about time you were saying something like that. For a minute, you had me almost sore at you. <laughs> Pardon me. I've been assigned to take over the duties of a Mr. Clark. I'm Clark. How do you do? My name's Cutler. Leslie P. Cutler. How do you do, Mr. Cutler? How Sit do down. Do? Sit down. I'll have this junk cleared away in a jiffy. Oh, no hurry, no hurry. Well, darling, I've got to run. What's the rush? Lots of things to do this afternoon. Where do you have to go now? I'm due at Harrison's at any minute. What, again? Yes, I'm doing a series of articles on his life. I don't like it. I'd rather you keep away from him. What? And throw away the best assignment I've ever had? I tell you, the man's dangerous. Oh, darling, you're going to start that all over again. Yes, I want you to stop. Well, I won't. I've got a job to do, and I'm going to do it. I forbid it. Well, go ahead and forbid it. I'll be back in a little while, and you can forbid me some more. Goodbye. Bye. Your wife? Not yet. You sure had me fooled. Mr. Leslie P. Cutler speaking. Who? It's for you. Clark speaking. How'd you like a hot tip on the real killer in the Cromwell case? Who is this speaking? Never mind who it is. I know a guy who was connected with the Cromwell murder, and maybe a couple more. Well, if you give us the right tip, there's 5,000 in it for you. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm calling. Now, look, I got a date with a guy this afternoon. If he treats me right, you can forget that I called you. And if he don't, we'll make a deal. Is that all you have to say? Yep. Now take down this address. 472... Oh, no. Yeah? What's the name? Who'll I ask for? Just ask for Dave. I'll be there at 8.30 sharp. I'll know what's what by then. Well, shall we start? Fine.
Mr. Harrison feels the first two chapters should be devoted to his child. Chapters? That's right. He has decided since meeting you that you're ideally suited to write his full biography. Oh, that's very interesting, but it will take weeks. Perhaps months. Here are some notes we have made. They will help you picture Mr. Harrison in his true light as a public benefactor. Oh, everyone knows that. Mr. Harrison says you're mistaken. If he hadn't been absolutely innocent, that young prosecutor might have used the case to build himself a career at the expense of Mr. Harrison's good name. Oh, no, no. I'm sure Eddie was... Uh, Mr. Clark was sincere. Is he convinced he was wrong? Well, he's a pretty stubborn fellow. Excuse me. Surely. Hello, Kramer. I want to see Harrison. He's busy at the moment. Come back later. You'd better not be too busy to see me. Very well. Will you wait in the library, please? That's better. Someone to see you, sir. I think it's important. You excuse us. Oh, certainly. Is this reward of yours on the level? Certainly, if you can produce the murderer. Fine. Then I can't lose. What do you mean? I need five G's. Now, do I get it here to keep quiet or at headquarters to talk? We don't understand what you're driving at. I think you do. What's the verdict? We haven't that much in cash. You'll have to come back later. Oh, no. You bring it over to my place. I like it better there. See? What time? Eight o'clock tonight. OK? Yes. Fine. I'll be waiting for you. Don't forget, eight o'clock. And in cash. Okay. Well? Get rid of the girl. But have her back here before 8 o'clock tonight, without fail. Right. We're terribly sorry this happened. Oh, that's perfectly all right. And we may surely expect you at 7. I'll be here. Thank you. Bye. Listen, Mabel, I told you. But, sweetie pie, I gotta work. Yeah, me and Brady's got a murder on our hands, sugar. Well, you tell that Irish Brady, if you get home late again tonight, he'll have two murders on his hands, and you'll be one of them. Oh, you're right there with the wisecracks, ain't you, babe? <laughs> Listen, will you get off that phone? <laughs> oh, boy, what a sense of humor. She says if I don't get home tonight, you'll have two murders on your hands. That's very funny, very funny, but tell her you've got work to do. I did, but Mabel don't saw a week. All she right, said to hang up on her. Hang up on Mabel? You don't know what you're saying. She'd knock my block off. Yeah, 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 sure. What? I heard you, honey. Don't give me that. What? Yeah. No kidding. I got a work. Now you listen to me, Pete Corrigan. Yeah, I'm listening, Mabel. If you think I'm going to sit home on my front porch night after night, you're afraid. Oh, but. Baby doll. Do you think look, I look. enjoy looking at four But turtle doll. I want to get out to a picture with Tootsie Pie. I might as well be not a little oh, traveling commissioner or a dinner with a sailor. Now listen, Brady. Yes. Just had a call from the commissioner about that Cromwell case. And some of the words he used wouldn't get by the Hayes office. The captain just come in. I don't care if the captain is here. Put him on. I'll tell him a thing or two, too. Well, not very much, so you see. I see. <laughs> I see both of you sitting around your office here doing nothing. Who'll be murdered? 
What are you waiting for, anyway? Do you expect the murderer to drive up outside and come in and surrender himself? Do you? Uh, no, sir. Do you? Yeah. I think there's a chance. Oh, no, no, naturally not. Then get to work, both of you. Assistant District Attorney's always just calling me agents and tips. Oh. Now listen to me, both of you. Come here when I'm talking to you. Yes, sir. Come here. Now look. If you two don't want to get a brand new set of calluses in a different place from pounding them hard pavements, you better get busy. I'm putting Mahoney, Hogan, and Ginsburg on your detail. I want everybody who even thought of going near the scene of that Cromwell murder looked up. I want him looked up away back to diaper days. I want that Cromwell killer. You understand me? Yes, yes sir. Then get him. And I don't mean maybe. Kind of oik, Danny. Say, what does the captain expect a guy to do? He comes in here all hot. Hey, Bull! Mr. Harrison, please come in. Davy said he was expecting someone, but I didn't think it was you. May I have your hat? He's in his room taking a nap, I think. I'll call him. Go right up. It's the first door on the left. Shouldn't ought to have done it. You shouldn't ought to have done it. No, sir. You shouldn't ought to have done it. All right, all right. So I shouldn't have ordered or done it. So what? So what? So I better not go home at all. That's so what? Boy, you should sure fix me up. Well, she's not me cold for even less than that. Listen, why don't you shut up and sit down? Say, do you think I could get my vacation starting tomorrow? Why? Well, so I could have two weeks to get healed up in. Shouldn't ought to have done it. Is everything all right? Perhaps you can tell me the correct time. Mabel, I ain't here. Brady talking. Huh? No, I'm leaving in five or ten minutes. Let it go till tomorrow. Is that ready o'clock? Should we go? I right, might as well. I hope this isn't another wild goose chase. Well, hot or cold, we gotta follow it up. Hey, wait a minute. I'll meet you in back, just in case Mabel's waiting out in front. Here's Mabel. When he came in, he wrote this note and gave it to me. And I sent him up to Davy's room. And he came down. And he spoke to me. Asked me about the time. That's all I remember. Same thing that happened to Cromwell. No. Yeah. Mrs. Rigby said Harrison wrote this. Don't trouble yourself. I can find my way up. Good. All that we have to do now is compare it with his handwriting. Yeah. Well, where's Davy? Why doesn't he come down? 
Is anything wrong? Uh, wait a minute, Mrs. Rigby. I'm sorry, but your son is... No. No. Don't say it. My baby. Oh. Oh. Take charge here, Pete. We're going to see Harrison right now. Sure. Harrison in? Yes, but he's very busily engaged. Yeah? Well, he'll be more busily engaged in a minute. He's not kidding. Babs, are you all right? Of course, Eddie. What's this all about? It's about a murder. Another murder. A fellow named Rigby was strangled not more than 30 minutes ago. What has that to do with us? Let me. Right. Don't trouble yourself. I can find my way up. Here. Say that again. Mr. Harrison couldn't see your lips. Oh, yeah? Right, don't trouble yourself. I can find my way up. Will you kindly explain the meaning of all this? Don't worry, sonny boy. It'll explain itself. They're not even close. He must have disguised his writing. Yeah. Wait a minute. Are you, by any chance, trying to connect Mr. Harrison with this murder, too? Yes. You must be mad. I've been here since 7 o'clock, and Mr. Harrison hasn't left this room more than five minutes. That's very funny. Rigby's mother, who knows him personally, said he was there not more than 30 minutes ago. And what's more, he talked to her. Talked to her? Yes, talked to her. Well, now I know you're mad. I thought even you knew by this time Mr. Harrison can't talk. This is the most outrageous thing I've ever heard. Who do you think you are, the Gestapo? This isn't Germany. You have no right to barge into people's homes like this. I'm going to take this up with the mayor or the commissioner if it's the very last thing I... Oh! If he can't hear, what's the idea of the grand piano? We have it for the pleasure of our guests. Hmm. Very odd. Is it played much? Oh, quite frequently. Pretty dusty. I'll speak to the housekeeper about that. Terribly out of tune. Or, or maybe it's me. Lieutenant Brady, where is your warrant to enter this house? I haven't got any. It's customary, you know. Really? You'll find out it's customary when I finish talking with the commissioner. Now, take it easy, honey. Well, don't honey me. You can't get away with this. Well, now, what's all the excitement about? They let us in, didn't they? They haven't ordered us to leave yet. Well, now, if I'd have said, open in the name of the law, that would have been different. I'd have had to have had a search warrant. As it is, I'm only paying a little social visit. Get it? Very smart trick. Mm, yeah, I think it's pretty cute myself. If you're waiting for an invitation to leave, you have it. I'm waiting for him to say it. Mr. Harrison says if you haven't learned your lesson yet, you're welcome to make fools of yourselves again. Huh. <laughs> there is no argument. that ate the canary. What have you found out? I think your hunch was right from the first, Ed. I believe he's guilty. What makes you say that? Give me some. Well, Harrison heard me when I struck the piano. I didn't get a tumble out of him when I fired the gun. 
What makes you think he heard the piano? I was watching him like a hawk. His eyes almost popped out of his head. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't want to let it rest for the night. Make him think I'm licked. If my hunch is right, I'll come back here tomorrow with a search warrant and tear the yarn apart. Why wait till tomorrow? I don't want to sleep on it. Meet me in my office at 9 o'clock tomorrow. I think I'll be able to give you the whole setup. Sorry to trouble you folks, but you know how it is. You bet we know. You're coming with us. Like fun. Well, you said you could swear this man was here all evening, didn't you? Of course I could. Good. I'd like that in writing. Now, are you coming down to headquarters willingly, or do I have to make a pinch? Okay, you win. But you're going to be sorry. Thanks, pal. Good night, Mr. Harrison. Let's get going before you two break into a minuet. Mr. Harrison, I'd like to apologize for knowing either of these men. Shall I come tomorrow? Good night. Don't bother. We can find our way out, pal. Sorry, Mr. Clark. No one can go in right now. It's all right, Kelsey. I have a date with Brady. Well, I'm afraid you won't see him, sir. Why not? Because he's dead. Dead? Brady dead? Yes, he was found murdered this morning. But where? How does it happen? I don't know. You'll have to see Corrigan. He's put in charge of the detail. Say, where have you been? I've been trying to get you for an hour. How did it happen? Tell me all about it. Well, Brady's wife found him strangled in bed this morning. Strangled? Yeah, just like the others, Rigby and Cromwell. Well, this is terrible. I'll say it is. It's Harrison. Jim was on him when he killed him. What do you mean, on to him? Well, he stumbled onto something out there last night, something to do with the piano. The piano? Yeah, he didn't tell me what it was exactly, but he was going to crack it wide open this morning. Listen, Ed, if Harrison thinks he can get away with this one, he's crazy. You know that Jim was the best friend I ever had. And I'll get the guy that killed him if it's the last thing I do. Well. Offices at the door and everything this morning, huh? You must have been expecting me. <laughs> you know, there's the loveliest little article in the Chronicle this morning, and it's all about him. Come in. With pleasure. <laughs> well, where's the mastermind this bright and sunny morning? Just sit down. Oh, thank you. I just dropped in to tell him a few things I was too mad to think of last night. Where is he? Jim was murdered last night by Harrison. This is a gag. It isn't funny. It's not a gag. I think I will sit down. We're keeping the whole thing quiet. If this gets in the paper, quiet. you... Eddie, do you really think it was Harrison? Certainly. Who else? Brady had them all figured out, and he knew it. Listen, I've been put in charge of this case, and I don't want you to write one word sure about it. Sure, you can count on me. Jim was a good friend of mine. And keep away from Harrison. What about my articles? How can I get out of that without telling my editor? Make an excuse, stall. I don't care. Can't you see, honey? If you should stumble onto a secret, he'd get rid of you like he did Jim. Yes. But I think I'll still keep on seeing him. You will not. Can't you play ball for at least once in your life? Well, I'm trying to. Listen, if Harrison really is guilty, I'm the only one who can get close to him without him getting wise, don't you see? Oh, darling, please let me go, because I'm going anyway. Maybe she's got something there. Congratulations, Pete. You're improving. Oh, never mind that. When's your next date with her? Seven o'clock tonight. Okay. I'll have a couple of men around the house while you're there. How's that, honey? All right. You go get your stories if you're going to anyway. But whatever you do, don't touch the piano. Shut up. I'm just warning you. Shut up! What's this all about the piano? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just don't snoop. Now, look, honey. Promise me this one thing. At the first sign of any danger, you won't argue, you won't play smart, you won't do anything except yell. Okay, I'll sound my A. Make it a high C. And then my brave knight will come charging to the rescue on a white horse. Ha <laughs> ha, oh sweet. Promise? You bet I promise. All right.
I don't like the idea, Pete. Well, you had a great chance to keep your mouth shut about the piano, and you didn't take it. I'm afraid my editor won't let me go out of town. We'll have to wait until you return to finish the article. <clears throat> now, the last thing I have is the gymnasium you built in Chicago in 1927. Are going to go by yet, Kelsey? Yeah, he's over there. Thanks. This waiting is getting on my nerves. Wait till you're married. Excuse me, sir. If there's nothing else you want, I'd like to go out for a while. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. I think he saw us. Walk away. What do we do now? Sit tight. Sorry to bother you, sir, but if you'll sign that letter to the mayor, I'll mail it when I'm out. It's in the den, sir. Will you excuse us, please? Certainly. The house is surrounded by cops. Take a look. I think that girl's a plant. What did I tell you? Bring that guy along, Kelsey. Where is she? What have you done with her? Come on, cut out the act. Where is she? Whom are you looking for? Don't give me that. Now look here, Harrison. That girl's in here and we know it. Yeah, we've been watching this house ever since she came in. Where is she? And if anything's happened to her, I'll knock your brains out. Permit me to handle this, Mr. Clark. Look, if you know what's good for you, you'll come across. Because I'm going to get the truth out of you if I got to choke it out. Keep an eye on these two guys.
Get up out of there. Go on over and sit down. I wish Brady had told me what was on his mind. Well, maybe it's the pedals. Well, I'll try him. Uh-oh. Mabel would kill me for that. Sergeant, look! I get it. Twins. I know you told so in my life. All I need is day. Why in the world did you tell me not to touch that piano? Now look what you got me into. Come on, come on. He's dead. Oh, no. Well, one of you can talk. That I know. And if it's you, you better start talking fast. Don't let him kid you. He's the one I heard him. Well, I never dispute a lady's word. Now we're getting somewhere. But it's my duty to tell you that anything you say will be used against you. Thank you, Sergeant. I see you know the law. You betcha. Well, the setup, as you call it, is obvious. My brother there was the real deaf mute. He took my place at dedications and at the trial, while I did the more difficult work. Such as killing Cromwell? Yes. Why did you kill him? For money. For money? Well, I thought you was rich, the way you get to charity. So did Cromwell and all the others. That's why I could arrange large loans privately. So privately, in fact, that after signing a note and getting the cash, it was a very simple matter to take back the note, leaving no evidence. Clever, eh? And you killed Rigby, too. Yes, he knew too much for his own good. And Brady? Yes. Why did you kill Brady? He was too curious about my piano to suit me. And now, gentlemen, I'm through talking. I'll see, uh, unless you can talk with a rope around your neck. Oh, a wise guy, huh? No, you don't. Poison's too good for you. Come on, bring him along, Kelsey. Come on, let's go. Well? Now, if you say I told you so, I'll slug you, so help me. Ouch! Uh -huh. 